The Florida Panthers now have two preseason games in the books on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Caitlin Daly from the Five Reasons Sports Network will be joining the show to discuss what she saw in person for the Florida Panthers in their split squad matchup against the Nashville Predators, all on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Tuesday, September 27th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listener of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at MondoMan12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. Don't forget to also subscribe to Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Ronan and Locked On NHL. We'll be covering all the preseason activities around the National Hockey League. So, Cats fans, we had two games for the Florida Panthers up up in Nashville. Split squad matchup. All the, the players who are signed and unsigned for the Panthers going into action, getting a little bit of an experience on the NHL level, mostly for the young guys. We know that this is only going to be a little bit of experience for some of the guys who were just most recently drafted before they make their way back down to junior hockey as we await the first round of cuts for the Florida Panthers during this training camp. But let me. this will be a good time to bring in my guest for today's edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. It is a person who was there in person in Nashville to witness both uh, those games. And it is my pleasure to bring into the show Caitlin Daly of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Caitlin, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It is always such a pleasure to be on. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I, I actually don't have the date uh, tracked uh, from the last time. I think the last time you were on, it was a... Uh, going behind the curtains from uh, the last time we recorded, it was, I, I believe, a 3 a.m. recording the day before Game 5 of the first round series against between the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning back in 2021. So it's been a little bit, So, but hey, great, grateful to have you back on uh, to, to discuss all things Florida Panthers. So you were, you were there in person for uh, both games, and let's talk a little bit about the the fir, the first game for the Panthers getting out to a two nothing lead or er, er, early for for the Panthers and really it really started with Etulu Sturanen during during the first few days of camp Etu was was wearing a different uh, practice jersey for the Panthers but hey he finds a way to get one on the breakaway of course he ha- he has to find a new partner on the penalty kill like Alex and I spoke about yesterday with Jonathan Huberto being gone. But hey, Barkov finds a way to get to his fellow countryman and he takes it the other way for, for a goal and on, on the on on the PK. So a lot of mixing and matching for the Panthers as well with some of the guys getting some not Barkov not playing the full two minutes as well on every single PK. But hey, the limit of time Time on ice, he get he gets for that. He finds a way to get it to Etu, and hey, uh, we said that Etu was going to make the the team yet on yesterday's show. I'm more certain, definitely this time around. Oh, I completely agree with you. And did you see how pretty that was? I mean, those were some beautiful dangles. He really got his fancy footwork tonight, and I think you know in the setting of the games. Um, Today, that was a great morale booster right before the first intermission. I'm sure the mood in the locker room was a lot better. Um, obviously, it's preseason. These games don't count towards the season points or anything, but um, definitely very impressionable moment for the younger players. Um, and then they came out in the second, of course, 
and Kai Schwint had that beautiful goal. I actually got to talk to him um, after the first game today. And uh, he was just saying, like, you know, he hasn't spent a lot of time up here, but he really likes the vibe in the locker room and he likes playing with everyone. Um, and, you know, it's all about experience and just trying to work harder. And I think coming off of a tough preseason or training camp week, heading into these preseason games, I think that was a good morale booster to get on the board hot in the mm. beginning. Of the one. Yeah. And you also, and you also got to think about the amount of intensity that these guys are going through with, going for straight from the first day of camp Thursday to the first day to the first preseason games uh, last night since this is coming out on a on a on a Tuesday so five straight days of just grinding it out and and just basically working on their conditioning and that's really what we what we're trying to see in these first uh two games and you know a lot of, a little bit of sloppiness for the Panthers early i mean Radko Gudis having three minor penalties in that first period alone and just putting uh the Panthers a little bit behind the eight ball early and giving Nashville more 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 of that possession for them and of course you spoke about with with Kai Schwent hey before be this is going to be a big confidence booster for him before he goes back down, back down to to junior hockey and and just throwing a puck on the net and hey it trick it trickles in through uh Connor Connor Ingram and hey they they find they find a way and you know Sergey Bobrovsky as well let's talk a little bit about him uh two two of the two of the goals that he gave up on the first one it was uh a breakaway by Yuso Parsonen and and the second one was on a sharp angle shot that was tipped in by his own player and Gus Forsling and really, I, I, I really I really liked how Sergei Bobrovsky looked, 10 of 12 in 31 minutes and 45 seconds of ice time as well, and looking to build off that, that season that he had from, from the previous, uh, now being in his fourth year. So but we, we, we were expecting the starting goalies to at least get, get a, not, not too much time, but hey, uh, so far so good for Sergei Bobrovsky. Yeah, I think that's a, a you know, he's, a veteran. Um, and I think that that is a common theme, especially amongst our goaltenders um, and our, our players who uh, were there last year and seasons before as well. Um, just, you know, seeing where the progress they've made in the last two years and seeing where they've made some errors. And I think the, the whole mindset is to go into this season, um, keeping in mind the accomplishments that they've had and trying to build upon them, especially now that there are so many new faces in the locker room and they're under new leadership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to go back to some of the young players on, on the, on the roster. One who's going to be who, one who's probably going to survive the first round of cuts and send to Kanunen, who recently signed his ELC back in May, uh, like likely going to start in Charlotte, but sometimes some sometimes you have to just throw something on the net and something something happens he throws one on on the end boards and ryan lomberg is there to convert to to make it uh three two uh panthers at the time and he also got the second assist on that shorthanded goal i i, I wanted to make sure that i mentioned that as well that got got it to bark off and then he got it to, to lusterine and as well so santu um getting two points in, in this one and going back to kai schwent he had a big block in front of the net when this was when Matt Gusta was already in the game too. The, the, the puck was scrambling in their zone and, and Matt Gusta, if Kai Schwent wasn't there, that would have been a, a goal for, for the national predators. And that was when they were going to take the lead at the time for, for the pan, for the predators. And also with, 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 Gusta being a young guy, just being undrafted um, out of, out of the OHL, gonna spend some time in the ECHL. You know, the, very encouraging from from Matt Gusta as well. But more uh, more players that I do want to uh, discuss. Before we move well. on, I do want to say um, I, I spoke to him after uh, the game as well, and Mac was saying how surreal of an experience this was um because he is from knoxville tennessee which is where university mm -hmm. of tennessee is um and having 
lived in Tennessee the last four years um, and worked in the NHL the last four years, I know that there are not a lot of born and bred NHL uh, players from Tennessee. And so I think that's really cool that he got to, you know, even though it's preseason, he made his NHL debut essentially um, at Bridgestone Arena, which everyone in Tennessee loves Preds games. He said he grew up going to games um, and watching the players that he played against tonight and being on on the same ice as them, he said, was such a surreal experience. And he had his whole family here uh, when he actually left the media room. Um, he had to go up and, and see his family. So it was really, it was a sweet moment. Um, but yeah, all those younger players uh, in the first game, especially, I think kudos to them because they, they knew the eyes that were watching this game. I mean, I saw every, everyone from upper management, Bill Zito, I ate dinner next to him. Like there were um, scouts from everywhere everyone was at this this game obviously because they have to make make the big decisions of who's getting cut so even the players that know that they're gonna have to go back down to to play for a couple years um i think they they saw the value and the opportunity that they had to impress the organization um with this experience yeah and and that that's why in especially in these first few days of of training camp and, and especially the first preseason game uh you there's the chances of seeing players dogging on on shifts or or at all are very are very low especially from the young players who are just trying to make that that first impression impression on the team but a few there it doesn't but also there's also some growing pains as well in that process and even even some growing pains for for new guys uh, um, newer guys on the team uh, one thing that the that these first two games had in common was there was a lot of times where the P panthers were caught in a shift change and uh breakaways going the other way for for the predators and i'm sure that's something that will be fixed uh within time uh and that that leads us that would lead us actually to talk more about game two of this uh of this uh, doubleheader between the Florida Panthers and the Nashville Predators. We're going to talk about that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about BetOnline. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, and podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores of every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to BetOnline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Second segment here on this Tuesday, September 27th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. I'm Armando Velez. I got Caitlin Daly of the Five Reasons Sports Network here joining the show. And Caitlin, game two. Not not as fun, I will say. Uh, no. Nope. But the, the, I did see some good things from 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 this uh, from this uh, this game. Not not. I don't want to get too caught up in what the final score was, especially with with I I saw with Matthew Kachuk being on the ice uh, for the first time with Sam Bennett for the first time in a few years. I saw how there was a little bit of miscommunications early from them, not connecting on passes, and and one player that I had so uh, as a player to watch for the Panthers, Michael Mike, Michael Dozato. There was a lot of miscommunications on the, the on the power play. He had a lot of, of some time on ice there, of on the on the man advantage, and the the most the the things that drive coaches crazy are when you ice the puck while on the man advantage. And that was really something that, uh, that happened early with the Panthers and as, and uh, along with more, more penalties for, for this Panthers team, but Matthew Kachuk and Sam Bennett, there was a, there was a big chance that Matthew Kachuk had, at, at, um, where he feeds it backhand to Brandon Montour right on top of the blue line and Askroff first round pick for the Nashville Predators. He was a pleasure to watch for Nashville on the other end. A, a, a duo of Yaroslav Askarov and UC Sarles, 
that is going to be a very fun tandem in the future. I'm glad that they're in the Western Conference versus the Panthers in the East. But hey, but hey, uh, that 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 just goes to show that goal the goalie situation in Nashville is is just fun to watch and and that they know what they're doing when developing that. So they definitely know what they're doing with with the goalies there. I actually, um, funny enough, did you hear that Nashville um, hired Pecorine uh, as part of their organization now? I did not know that. So I had forgotten about that, and I was walking down um, after game one with um, our small little Panthers group, and <laughs> I, you know, everyone's walking down, and I was like, wait a second, is that? <laughs> and yeah, sure enough. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, Nashville definitely had our number the second game. Um, I took some notes. My notes are, as I just got back from the game, I, my notes are a little disheveled. But um, the one thing before we move on that I did like, uh, just off the bat in the second game, before it got too deep into it, there's a lot of physicality there. Yes. Um, and I really, I really like that because Nashville is a very physical team, especially uh, the group that was playing in game two. Um, you have Ch Tanner Janot, Colton Sissons, a lot of guys that will throw you around and don't mind doing it. Um, and I think even did it to Nick Cousins too, very early near yeah, no, near so center the, ice. I liked, I liked that element. The Panthers um, were playing, you know, Bennett. And Kachuk and Cousins um, and Lundell, I really impressed me tonight with their physicality um, in those little moments. Uh, but that was just before before everything got, you know, went the way that we didn't want it to go. But I again, it's preseason. It was just everything is trial and error at this point. So yeah, and Spencer Knight was the team's MVP really for the first. Uh... 30, 30 so minutes for the Panthers as he faces 19 of 20 shots throughout that time. And the 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 shots on goal advantage was in favor of Nashville, 18 to 6. The Panthers were having a hard time uh, clearing the zone. Mark, I, I believe it was Mark Stahl who had a, a, a turnover and turn, turning it over to one of the one of the premier goal scorers of, of in, in the NHL, Philippe Forsberg, who just got a new uh, contract with the Predators, a 40 goal score, and then turning it over to him. And, uh, and yeah, that's not, that's not a guy that you want to turn the puck over. That's for sure. Yeah. They, they, uh, call, him, they call him filthy for a reason. <laughs> I, I like that. I like, I like that for, uh, Philippe Forsberg. And really the, I, I, I did, I, I was surprised though that the, the the line combos for 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 this second game how we saw mostly through the first four days of training camp how how we saw Reinhardt with a little bit with Barkov but we didn't see Reinhardt too much with someone like Anton Lindell or and and th thinking that someone like Colin White was going to be on that second line as well but but. Hey, this is this is that time for a little bit of experimentation as well, especially with the whole group that's uh not that is not all is all split up right now too. So that's a little bit of of what really really this is all about for for this Florida Panthers team at this point in time. Absolutely. And I think it's better like you said it's better to do it now when um it's not going to count against you if if you're trying out different recipes on the ice so to speak mm -hmm. yeah and and uh, spencer knight spoke to the media after the game about wh his about how he played in the, in this one facing 20 shots this is actually a question from caitlin uh, in the post game we're gonna we're gonna play that clip right now so you went 19 for 20 tonight what'd you like about your game out there i just felt pretty calm um just Almost, like I said, like pretty refreshed to just play in game action. Um, you know, we had a great few days of camp, and to me, the games were almost like the rewards from practice. And um, I just liked, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. You're almost just, you know, almost like a meditative state where you're just playing hockey. So, 
You've had a pretty steady game since entering the NHL, but do you have like one or two goals off the top of your head for this season? Yeah, I think it's just carrying what I what I you know what I learned last year back into this year, um, and also just building off you know as a team, you know what we accomplished last year and to the second round, but also taking it as you know motivation to take the next step and. You know, we have a lot of new faces and I'm, you know, looking forward to building, you know, a great bond and we have a great, you know, so far everything seems great and, you know, a great group of guys. So it's going to be a good season no matter what happens. And, uh, and this has been, this is, and it's funny because with Spencer Knight, you got to, you got to see a, a clincher for Spencer just a few years ago when, in, 20, in 2021, when, when Bob was struggling, Spencer Knight comes in. He he shuts the door for the, for the Panthers. I did believe it was like a seven to four final score just a, a few years ago uh, to to clinch their spot in the playoffs during that season. And just how much of a long way Spencer Knight has come from from that, and especially starting games five and six. And so far, so, so far, nineteen of twenty in just thirty minutes of play. It's a very encouraging sign for a, a guy who's on his very last year of his ELC. I completely agree. I also, um, I do have to say he, since day one, has always shocked me with uh, the level of composure he's had, um, even before he had played more than two games in the NHL. Um, so he's always, you know, been more mature and composed than your average year old. Um, but just to see him grow as a player the last couple of years um, has been so impressive, but it really just gets me because every time I um, have spoken to him in post game media, I've never met anyone so calm and composed. I, I do think that that is something that goalies um, innately have uh, as a survival tactic more than um, any other player on the ice has to is that mental composure component um, and emotional composure. But he really uh, was very pleased with his performance um, and was really excited about the group of guys in the locker room and, and just the general attitude. So um, it was great talking to him. I'm very confident in uh, his goals for the season and, and him fulfilling those um, and building on what he's already done with this organization so far. So I'm excited to see that. As am I. And it's funny because this this game, this second game, it was it was close for the most part, and then really it, it just fell apart towards the last uh, t- twelve to thirteen minutes of the of the game. Uh, Nick Cousins and Chris Tierney attacking the net over and over again. And I don't know how it doesn't get by Yaroslav Askarov. And then there's a penalty for, for, for the Panthers. And then they go shorthanded. And then Matt Duchesne gets a beautiful pass to uh, Co- Cody Glass, who in, in that three-way trade between Nashville, Philly, and Vegas to get Cody Glass to, to Nashville, Ryan Ellis might not never play hockey again. Uh, Nolan Patrick is not playing this season at all for the Vegas Golden Knights. So there's a chance that Nashville could have won that trade, that three-way trade. And uh, the other, the other goal uh, that, 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 excuse me, that Cody Glass uh, goal was on the power play. Another rush going the other way, caught on a change for the Panthers. And that was a consistent theme also in game one as well. And then a familiar foe for the, for the Panthers, Ryan McDonough scores uh, from the blue line with a with a screen by Tanner Janot on Alex Lyon. I'm not gonna pin too much on Alex Lyon coming in, uh, even though he's a veteran on on the AHL level. He's won a Calder Cup with the Chicago Wolves. Not gonna pin too much on it. It's just really the the Panthers just spend too much time in their own zone, uh, really in this one, and that's really what the the problem was. They got it together a little bit in the second period. They came out hot in that one uh, with with the possession, but. Yeah. But really, it just wasn't a full 60 minutes of, of, of hockey for this Florida Panthers team. No, it wasn't. Um, and I, I agree with all of the the things you mentioned, and I'm not trying to make an excuse for it, but I do have to say, um, given that the first game was at 3 p.m. Central Time, um, 
it was not that full and i was very cold because it was uh kind of an empty arena but um the second game the the nashville loyal showed out and um i've told you about this before i've definitely spoken about it on here uh nashville is a very tough place to play and you know the veteran nhl guys know that um, but I think with these younger guys in the mix, um, a factor that should not be overlooked is how annoying it is for a visiting team to play in Bridgestone Arena. And they were, you would have thought it was a playoff. Um, I mean, they were screaming the, the chant, um, you know, they have the team draw, thing go up when they score a goal. It's literally a show. And then... <laughs> they start chanting the goalie's name and saying, Hey, you suck. And they do that five times. And, um, I mean, they were banging on the glass. They were screaming like you, it was a very loud arena. And, um, given that it's a preseason game and they just came off an incredibly grueling week of training camp. I don't think the younger guys, um, were prepared to, to play a full 60 minutes to the best of their ability in that environment. Um, but now they know. I think it was a great learning experience because Nashville was voted like one of the most difficult uh, places to play in. And I'm not sure if that's because of the proximity to the Broadway bars or the loudness of the crowd. But um, I, I definitely think that that was a factor. I was surprised at how many fans showed up <laughs> tonight. I'm looking up Nashville's home record from last year quickly. 25-14-2 at home last season. A pretty decent home record. Uh, so not, not, not the best in the NHL, but not the worst. For, for a team that, that was really on the bubble all year, they took care of business at home. And, of course, with when it's not football season for the Titans and, and uh, no, no UT football on Saturdays, that the the Preds are all they got during that that time, so that's yeah. why maybe that's why there's so much uh, loyalty there. And of course, uh, when it, when it comes to when it comes to Nashville, and we're we're gonna we're gonna transition over to segment number three, where we're gonna discuss Paul Maurice and his, and what he had to say after the game, and talk about what his line of thinking going through a win. That was as close as can be, and and they and they lost that the the Panthers fell a little flat, and we're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Third and final segment on this Tuesday, September 27th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. I got Caitlin Daly from the Five Reasons Sports Network here on the show. Before we mention Paul Maurice, I, I do want to give a special uh, shout out to to Rudolph Balsers, who I'm really looking forward to what he can do on on the top line for for the Panthers. Led the led the team in shots on goal in Game One, and with even though I don't think he's going to be on power play one uh, uh, with, of course, it being split squad. I saw a lot of uh, times where he was like right in front of the net. And of course, Paul Maurice working with pairs and seeing that Barkoff and Verhage are going to be together. And then they add a third person. Balsers uh, spoke about it yesterday. Great underlying numbers from, from his time in San Jose, but generating four shots on goal Looks like that the separation of Kachuk and Barkov could create, continue to create that uh, balance throughout the lineup. And even though Huberto has gone, it it for for this new coaching staff, they don't have to put the both the superstars together, and it creates so much more uh, balance throughout the lineup. I I think um, I think it'll be interesting to see. You know, this is preseason, but I, I think um, Coach did a good job of balancing 
like you said, but I do think it'll be interesting as, um, you know, the roster dwindles uh, to see, you know, the impact of that trait. And you're going to see it both in positive and negative ways, um, no matter what. But I'm I'm looking forward to that and seeing how he then uh, moves the team forward. For, for sure. And 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 definitely uh, I wish I wish we could see them in the same game. But of course, with the, this first one being the situation that it is, um, if, if a hurricane does not hit uh, hit this part of Florida, the latest one says that it's going to be a little west of Tampa. So looks like that South Florida is going to um, avoid uh, Hurricane Ian. But with with but we don't know how travel is going to look like. So it could be it could be as soon as Thursday that we see the uh, Kachuk and Barkov at, at least on the power play together, and and of course that top line with Balsers, and then as soon as they get off the ice, Kachuk uh, k- line coming on. But gr- just very excited to see. I'm I'm more I'm even more excited for Thursday. But I do want to discuss what you asked Paul Maurice in. Um, in the post game presser uh, on Monday night, talking about the mindset behind it, so we're we're gonna we're we're gonna go to Paul Maurice on what he said about uh, Monday's ma- uh, matchups. In the younger players, we saw they were responsible for those early points in Game One. What do you think they've picked up from playing with the veterans all week? How hard veteran work in practice every day. And that would be if you get to watch Barkov and Ekblad and Forsling, every single drill they push as hard as they possibly can. They pass the puck hard every single time, right? These the kids come out of junior really, and they shouldn't have no idea the pace that NHL players help how, how they push their bodies. It's why they train so hard all summer so that they can come to camp, go through a grueling week. Uh, for the young guys, it was a real challenge, right? To, to end up after four days and then and then get into an NHL exhibition game was a real challenge. But that's where the great learning happens. Not even from coach to player here. It's what they learn from the guy. You know, they get to skate with, with Barkoff on the ice. I mean, that's as good as there is in the NHL. And that's an incredible uh, kind of experience that you can only get from having it. Thank you. Here's my biggest takeaway from your question to Paul Maurice, Caitlin. When he, when Paul Maurice said, not from coach to player, but from, from the young guys to the veteran, because this is, I, I don't want to put words into Paul Maurice's mouth, but this is pretty much saying that he's going to do the work as far as setting up plays and creating systems within, within the team. But you guys have to continue to go on the ice and learn from one another and work together and and get along um, off the ice as well and con- and continuing for these guys to kind of be a be a sponge for when they're in that environment because uh, of course they're 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 not gonna they're not gonna be here for 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 much lo- longer some of them so that's my biggest takeaway from your question uh, to Paul Maurice. I would agree with you. I also think that. Um along the same lines um you know he puts uh coach maurice puts the system in place of training camp um that brings you know this whole organization both young and old together you have the rookies and the veterans um and he sets that system up in place which then gives the younger players the opportunity to get on the ice with these older players but um you're absolutely right it is you know the moments that are invaluable and experience uh you know a guy who's 18 years old who just got drafted getting to play on the ice with barkov getting to play with the stall brothers getting you know that is experience that you can't just absorb from watching film or going over plays um and so those are the moments that um and it, it really is like an investment um as well because you have the for the organization as a whole it's a great thing having these split squad teams um and this big training camp because you have the older guys um who really know what they're doing and have a lot of great things like and and skills and then you have the younger generation coming in and learning from them and absorbing that and i think we've you know every hockey organization has that in place um but 
with the talent that the Panthers have in their system right now, um, it's it's a really special thing, and and he clearly thought so as well. Yeah, and all and also the question before uh, as well his his answer to that was speaking talking about how the first four, four or five days now we're gonna see he he said that we're gonna go from a from a grind style to a fast style now and i part of me was trying to like think about what he meant by that but i think that as as far as uh grind grind style what he means by that is just okay we're gonna do this drill after drill after drill nonstop, barely any rest no no water break in between or barely any and just keep going we're going to see how fit you are for 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 what what they are trying to sell and now and now and now we're at, we're going to be at the at the point now where there's going to be okay how how are they going to how are they going to set up like a one timer off a face off on on the power play or something what 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 are the positionings that they're going to be in when when they are on the PK now that now that they'll have more of their 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 players together and all that stuff and of course he even said that he's not here to really ch- ch- uh, change the team as far as uh, their speed because he spoke about their speed they're still gonna get their rushes uh, on on and, and breakaways because of just the personnel that they have. So that's not really going to change much. But what's really going to change, uh, in my opinion, is how how responsible they are in their own zone, and and about just being just being able to put their bodies in front of the net, so they so that when they have their breakouts, that they are more structured, and that they they could even even if there's a guy that that gets back from the opposition, that they can reset and still work work the puck around, and that and that that their speed when they beat somebody, hey, open man and and, and they and they and sets up someone for a one timer. So that's really kind of the difference that I'm thinking that Paul Maurice is trying to implement implement for this Panthers team. Yeah, I think I think what he meant by that exactly. Um, you know, the the lack of the gritty training days, um, a lot of young guys who haven't had to put in such grueling physical work play after play after play every day not slacking off and and you know at the elite pro level that is the nhl there is not room for that so these teenage kids um who haven't had that experience needed a couple days you know to get into the the swing of that and get their bodies conditioned and now that they've put it into practice in these two preseason games and played another team um and they they've had that on ice experience playing with and against other nhl veterans um now they can pick up the speed of learning and and start putting that in action now that they have a game or two under their belt Mm -hmm. yeah and and really really the 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 term that we've been preaching is getting up to game speed hey and they got one they got one under their belt they and now now they're award, rewarded with a day off tomorrow right right before right before hope what's hope hopefully uh, another practice and before a a, a game at, at home against the Carolina Hurricanes uh the Florida Panthers will did say that $15 tickets i believe it was for uh near the glass and that their uh all their uh tickets that they are selling will be going to to charity so so go um go go support the panthers in person on on thursday against the carolina hurricanes if they have a game and 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 hopefully we'll see more of you know the growth that this uh florida panthers team is 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 hope what we're hoping that they can they can make uh caitlin uh any any parting words before we sign off here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast? Thank you for having me, as always. And uh, tell people where they can find you and your work online. Um, my Twitter handle is at cdaily95. 
It's D A L Y, like John Daly, but he's not my dad. Um, and my website is uh, CaitlinJDaly.com. Awesome. Make her to make sure to check out her work there and on the Five Reasons Sports Network. So, uh, Caitlin, thank you once again, and hope to have you on soon. Thanks so much. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to so be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Make sure to subscribe to Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden. We'll be covering all the preseason activities around the National Hockey League. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure to listen to today's episode of Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a 30-minute podcast every day talking all things NHL. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. So I'm Armando Velez with Caitlin Daly. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're to a team every day.